Good morning, everybody. So here we are gathered in the presence of the Lord Jesus, who is the source of our strength, so that in our journey on this fifth day of the third month of the year, we continue to move on until we who believe in Jesus reach our final destiny. And our final destiny is what the Lord left with the apostles before he died, the, day, the night before he was arrested, when he tells them, do not be afraid, do not worry. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places, and I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And once the places are prepared for you, I am returning to get you so that where I am, you also may be. That's the end of the journey of those who believe in Jesus, the Father's house. And while we are in this journey, we need to be strengthened in our faith. Because if there is anything to describe this journey, it is violence. From the newspapers, violence that we don't hear or read from papers because they are not reported. But there is violence. And the readings today speak of that. In our journey, those who have gone ahead of us, the brothers of Joseph, Reuben, has left us, have left us their message and experience. In the first reading, the brothers, because of their jealousy and envy towards their youngest brother, Joseph, wanted to eliminate him. They wanted to kill him. But Reuben, the eldest, intervened for the sake of their father, who loved Joseph very much. The second reading speaks of violence. Jesus, in order to point out the irresponsibility and the lack of commitment of the Pharisees, brings out this story that begins wonderfully because God has made a garden so beautiful and so to it that everything was set in order that he could list it out to other tenants. But then, not to repeat the story of the gospel, violently, even the son, the heir of the landowner, was killed. Today also, we join the Catholic Church in our prayer for the Holy Father, who goes today to Iraq to promote peace and reconciliation in that war-torn -torn country, and especially to strengthen the faith of the Christian Iraqis, so that they would always be, that they will always remember that through the presence of the Holy Father, the representative of Jesus on earth, they are not abandoned. What are these readings telling us today? It tells, it tells us, they tell us, precisely of the presence of violence in our world, in our life. But there is something that we should admire in these readings because the, the Word of God is always a good news. What is behind the good news in the first reading? The good news is that Reuben wanted to save Joseph. There will always be people, people amidst of violence who would be so generous to save other people's lives. What is the good news in the gospel today? The good news from the perspective and experience of the early Christian community tells us that Jesus is that stone rejected and yet becomes the cornerstone of the community. And in the, good, in the news of the Holy Father's visit to Iraq, the good news is himself telling those who are, who are suffering in that country, in spite of the risk that he is facing, 
Do not be afraid. Be strengthened in your faith. And the good news today is the first Friday. We are being reminded that amidst the violence, the celebration of the first Friday of the Sacred Heart of Jesus reminds us that there is a God who loves us so much that we see that reality in the suffering and death and the rising of the Lord Jesus from the dead to console us, to comfort us. This brings us precisely to the presence of the Lord whose sacred heart we remember on the first Friday of the month in the Eucharist. He is with us. He accompanies us. He walks with us. And that is precisely the better good news. Jesus does not abandon his people. Jesus guides us. Jesus leads us until we all who believe in Jesus reach our final destiny, the Father's house. And in the meantime, because he knows and we know that our journey on this fifth day of the third month is dangerous and full of risk and peril, he tells us, Ito ang aking katawan. This is my body. Be strengthened by my body. The journey is long. Take, this is my body. And we should add also in this good news that finally we are hearing of vaccines arriving in the Philippines. That should also motivate us to look forward and not remain in this kind of hopelessness. Finally, of course, the question is, when will I get the chance to be vaccinated? So therefore, in all this, what we're experiencing today, we turn to Jesus, we turn to his sacred heart, we don't turn to the Holy Father for his courage, we turn to the gospel that tells us that the cornerstone that has been rejected is very much present with us. And we also turn to the experience of the brothers of Joseph, because there will always be a Reuben who will save us.